dudes, how you doing? I hope you're having a fantastic damn day. Welcome back to the channel. Today we'll be discussing how you can begin a realistic career mode with the likes of AC Milan. If you do enjoy content like this and you are new to the channel, please subscribe. I produce content like this on a daily basis. So if you don't want to miss out on anything fun that's happening on this absolutely amazing goddamn channel, um, make sure you subscribe. Make sure you also hit that like button, please. It will, you know, obviously let the YouTube algorithm know that I, yours truly, Brom Squad, BSG, um, is doing a good job so obviously it'll help the algorithm promote the video content that i am producing at this moment in time obviously in videos like this we go through the squad we discuss who should be leaving who you should look to try and you know bring into the team obviously that's transfers where you should try and send your youth academy scouts obviously we try and follow a very realistic path that the teams in real life tend to do as well so Again, if you can hit that like button down below, let's hop on straight into the video. And that's right, we're back with another shameless plug of a previous video I have done. But we have also replicated and recreated Pioli's 433 system in the game FC24. So if you haven't seen that video and you would like to start off in a, a realistic AC Milan career mode, well, it goes a long way in having the realistic tactics with it. So I'll link that at the end of this video. If you can, go check it out and you can obviously implement them into your realistic AC Milan career mode. Observing the squad, we've got the likes of Morante, Magnon, as well as Sportilio as your goalkeeping options. Of course, this man is damn near close to 40. Um, so he's in the final 12 months of his deal, maybe extending him. Sometimes you do start off a career mode and he is set to retire. So it's it's an either or hit or miss type situation. But again, he is your third choice goalkeeper. No real changes need to be made for that area. I think with Magnon, I, I, I don't think you need to replace him. But if you do, there are a few options that you can potentially go with. Um, you know, some, some younger goalkeepers, LaFont being one of them as well. But again, I, I think this is a very strong area of the AC Milan squad. Into your left back department now, essentially you've, you've really only got Teo Hernandez as well as this man right here, who I'm not even going to try and pronounce his name. You also have the likes of Florenzi who camped out either, either as a left or a right back. So I think again, the, the left back area is quite solid, although you can maybe look to bring in maybe one or two other players. Now, the centre back department. This is an area that is, at the moment, heavily, heavily injury stricken. They are looking to potentially sign one or two players, which we will talk about later on. But I mean, again, you've got the likes of Simon Kiar, you've got Tomori, Kalulu, Tio, who recently got his new face in FC24, which is absolutely fantastic. Um, and then you've got a few younger players here who I would potentially look to loan out. Pele Pellegrino. 20 years old, Argentinian, 69 overall. He does have a high potential. I would look to try and loan him out for the first season because you do have the likes of um, Malak Tio, Kululu, um, Tomori, as well as Kiara. And if you do look to try and bring in another center back, maybe, just maybe, um, you know, you won't have enough space and time to obviously try and grow and progress a young player like Marco Pellegrino. So you do have a few of these younger players that should probably get some game time, and therefore I would advise you loan them out. As for your right-back department, we've got the likes of Calabria, Florenzi, and a new man right here, Terecciano, signed from, I'm, I'm not exactly sure, I think it may have been Hellas Verona, forgive me, but he is 20, can also play as a left or a right back or even a right midfielder, again, a very good signing to make, I would look to try and, you know, maybe convert the likes of Florenzi into that left back or maybe even Torecciano, but again, you would want to try and develop a player like this, of course he is 20, he is Italian, does uh, have the, the great potential, maybe developing him as the understudy for Calabria for maybe season 3 or 4 down the line, I think it's not a bad option going forward. As for your midfield area now, this is also another place where they've lost a few players. The likes of Krinich has left and he is now playing for a Saudi Arabian team. Um, so I would look to definitely transfer list him and get him out the side. You've got the likes of Benetso, who is the only natural recognized DM in the side. So maybe also looking to, you know, bring in a backup for him. I know the likes of Ruben Loftus, she can also play there, but he is more of a, that box-to-box -box midfielder. And I mean, I've also just noticed that Loftus, she can play as a wingback. That's very interesting to me. Very, very interesting. But... For me personally, I see Loftus-Cheek as that box-to-box -box midfielder. Just with the likes of Reinders as well as um, Adli, Pogbegba as well, as well as Musa. Musa more so can probably play as that DM, but again, somewhat more of a box-to-box -box type player, you could say. Um, so I would definitely say for the midfield departments, you've got a whole host of different number eights that can definitely perform and produce in that area of the field, but you don't really have a number six that can either replace or back up the likes of Bennett Sir. So definitely look to try and you know bring in a player like that. Um, into your attacking midfielders now, obviously out on loan, um, De Ketelet is one of my favorite players. I'm very, very sad that he hasn't actually worked out at the likes of AC Milan, but hopefully, you know, he's doing well at um, Atalanta. I haven't really like been keeping up with him um, since he left, 
But I, I hope he's doing well. I hope AC Milan don't sell him. I hope they can bring him back and he works out very, very well for them later on down the line. Um, Maldini as well at Monza doing very, very well. And then we've got like a whole host of these guys like um, Messias as well as Salamakas. Obviously, when they come back from their loans, I would look to try and, you know, move them on out of the club. Salamakas a few seasons ago was doing quite well, but he hasn't really, you know, progressed from there. So shift him on, get some money into the team. The same goes for the likes of Junior Messias, who I've heard that's apparently Genoa are looking to trigger the, the two or the three million euro uh, clause to obviously make his deal permanent. So again, getting rid of him wouldn't be the most unrealistic idea. As for the likes of your forward line now, we've got the likes of Pulisic, Liao, um, Chaka Traore, who I would definitely look to try and loan out, get some game time under his belt, as well as the likes of Samuel Chiquese and Romero. Now again, with Romero, just like with Traore, you want to try and loan him out to try and get some minutes under his belt but as for your other you know more senior forwards um i would look to maybe look to try and bring in another right winger more specifically a left footed right winger that can invert just like what chakwezi can do i know pulisic can play on the left or the right and he does provide a very good bench option but more so you want him to be inverting cutting in and shooting being more of the backup to what leal you know is doing um but again, yeah, just, just looking to try and, you know, cement that forward line. And then into your striker area, of course, you've got the likes of Giroud, Divock or Rigi. I can see him probably being moved on in the summer when he comes back from his loan from Forest. So probably getting rid of him is essential. The likes of Luka Jovic only signed a one-year deal with AC Milan on a free, I think. I think it was on a free, but he signed a one-year deal. I think he's doing quite well. Uh, the, the bits and pieces that I have seen of AC Milan this season, I think he's done very, very well. I mean, I watched him against Newcastle. I thought he was very good when he came on the field. I watched him the other day. He scored a really good goal. So he's, he's coming into form again, which is really, really good for the 25-year-old. The so maybe looking to extend him or maybe looking to extend him and then sell him. You can obviously whip in some, some cash and add it onto the transfer pile. And then we've got another player here, a very young player, or not very young, but you know, a young player that a lot of us would have known about for a little while. Noah Okafor, signed recently in the summer. A good player with a high potential, right? He was a wonder kid in previous FIFAs and, and so on. So trying to more or less make sure that he is ready to replace Olivier Giroud later on down the line is also a, a massive plus to the side, of course. You can look to maybe loan him out for the first season if you know he's not going to get as much game time. But you can also play him on the wing. You can play him in the midfield, as it says there. He can also play as a cam. So... There, there are a whole host of different positions that you can look to try and fit him into the side with. And then we've got the likes of Colombo, uh, an Italian 21-year-old, Lorenzo Colombo, 73 overall, can definitely come into the team and be a, a good rotational striker. So if you do find the likes of Giroud and, and Jovic at the team for the, the second season, or maybe even the third season, this man right here could be a very solid rotational striker between him as well as Okafor. And then, of course, we've got this man right here. Now, taking a look at the scouting department of the youth scouts, I've gone for three countries in particular, Ivory Coast, Argentina, and, of course, Italy. Italy is a hand-in-glove fit. You need to try and get that good young Italian um, talent into your side for later on in your career mode. But more so, the likes of Argentina, they have been scouting in Brazil, Argentina, the likes of Uruguay as well. So I've, got, I've gone for Argentina. They have a few Argentinian players in their side. Currently, young Argentinians that they have signed of late, as well as Ivory Coast. Now, they have been all over the place for Ivory Coast. They, they've actually set up recently, in like 2023, they set up um, youth academy camps in the likes of Tunisia. But now you don't actually have Tunisia in the game um, to, to send youth academy scouts to. So Unless I've, I've horribly messed up and I just haven't seen it. But they've also been scouting in Ivory Coast, as well as the likes of um, Morocco. So you can alternate between those three countries, and I think it's a very realistic move for you to try and send a youth scout to one of them. Now, starting off an AC Milan career mode requires you to have some money to obviously bring in certain players. And you start off with around 80 million pounds and it'll be around 84 million euros or so I, I keep doing this i keep just you know not worrying about the the career mode um options that you get in the beginning right where you can set like if you want to use euros dollars or, or pounds and naturally it is always set to sterling which is obviously pounds i need to actually edit it because another like these little tiny details that just go hand in hand with obviously extending a career mode you know engulfing yourself in a realistic aspect of it is you know, the currency, it's, it's a small little thing, but the currency goes a long way in just making sure that you're, you're in Italy, you're not going to use pounds, you're going to, you're going to either use dollars or euros, more so euros. So it, it's just a thing that I would suggest you guys can also do. But essentially, you start off with around 84 million euros for the AC Milan squad. Of course, I've got slightly less as I went ahead and bought 
a few scouts. And of course, speaking of scouts, your boy, Scout Brom, went ahead and found a few players that are actually linked with the club in real life. And you will definitely see there is 100% a running theme to how things are panning out. We've got the likes of Clement Lengley, obviously currently out on loan at Aston Villa, but he is linked with a move to the likes of uh, the San Siro. So we might see the, the deal get cancelled for the loan, going back to Barcelona and obviously AC Milan forking out some money for the, the French international. Of course, he is left footed, six foot one. And you also see there's slight running themes here as they are, are also linked with the likes of Kivior, who is left footed, six foot two, centre back, has a few good playing styles, block and slide tackle. I, I think it would be quite realistic for Kivior specifically. I think, you know, he is going to find himself very much out of the Arsenal squad very soon. Um, but yeah, a lot of these players are, are very much hand and glove fit for that centre back area. And like I've mentioned earlier, the, at the moment they're, they're going through a lot of struggles in the centre back department. A lot of injuries. People are either out of contract in the summer or they're picking up a lot of injuries. So that's why they are linked with a whole host of centre backs. They got Lengle, they got Kivio, they got Chalaba, Kelly, um, Brazier, Victor Lindelof, um, Bongiorno. They, they've got all these players here that you know. That they're all essentially left-sided centre backs. I know the likes of um, and the, the likes of Chalaba is, is more so a, a makeshift centre back slash right back slash DM, but he can definitely play as a centre back. He can come into the midfield and be a potential backup for the likes of Bennett, sir. But the likes of Lloyd Kelly, left footed. The likes of Brazier, left footed. The likes of Kivio, left footed. Uh, Langley, left footed. Bongiorno, left footed. Victor Lindelof is the only actual centre back that's right footed, but he does play predominantly on the left hand side for Man United when he does play. He has also got a four-star weak foot. And of course, he can also play as a left back. Um, speaking of which, the left back area, we've got the likes of Schwan Miranda. Recently, you know, linked with a move to AC Milan. He, his contract is out um, or expires in the summer, in the final 12 months. So you can definitely pick him up for a very cheap rate. He can be a very, very, very good backup for the likes of Teo Hernandez, who, when he doesn't play, you can replace him with some very good quality. And I mean, it's not far-fetched that you know, AC Milan have signed Spanish talent in the past. I mean, they signed Teo Hernandez, who I know is French, but they signed him from Real Madrid. So signing another player like Juan Miranda, who can potentially come in, be a backup, and eventually, if the likes of Teo Hernandez does leave the club, you have a very good, adequate replacement who has been under study for a few years, and then can take up the starting role himself. He does have a few good play styles and whipped pass and block. And then we've got another potential fullback option, Kadioglu. He is linked with a whole host of clubs. I've mentioned him countless times in previous videos like this, but it's it's inevitable that he will be leaving the likes of Fenerbahce, whether it's now in January or either in the summer. He can play on either flank as a left or a right back. And again, I'm not going to go too much into it because we have spoken about him quite a bit, but he does have a very high work rate and he's got a whole host of different play styles that could definitely, definitely fit in to this AC Milan side. And then finally, we've got the last area or the last position to go through martin zubamendi 24 years of age he is spanish they are scouting in spain a fair amount here but he has also been linked with moves to arsenal moves to ac milan i think he could definitely come in and be either a really good backup or a replacement for the likes of um bennett sir so make of it what you will but i think he would be a very very good signing and also he does have a real face so you can't go wrong with that so yes my dudes i hope you have enjoyed this video please leave a like leave a comment the tactics videos will be back from tomorrow. The career mode, might I say, is absolutely spicy for this weekend. So make sure you are subscribed. Make sure you do hit that bell notification. And of course, make sure you have a damn great day. I'm out!